up, it was 12, it was 4, it was 30. And then you got there. So you cannot prove that all of the coins that I put in the meter registered for the time. <coughs> what is the purpose of a parking meter? Judging relevance. It's totally relevant. This is a parking ticket trial. You can, you can ask a question, please. The purpose of a parking meter yes. is to relegate the time that someone spends in one spot. Does not the two hour time limit on Main Street also do that? That is the two hour time limit on Main Street for meters. Is there not posting on the meter post that also says two hour time limit? That's just to let people know that this is a two hour zone. Could the two hour zone be enforced without a parking meter? Was I prohibiting people from parking within a two block radius of a certain area of downtown? I don't think I understand that. I don't understand at all. Uh, I'll withdraw that question. Uh, were there vacant parking spots within a two block radius of my vehicle? Why is that important to what I have to decide here? totally relevant based on her statement of the purpose of parking meter. Well, the purpose of this case is not relevant, so I'll sustain the objection. Okay. No further question. Okay. Could you tell the court what particular coins, type of coins, are recognized by the meter? Can you, for example, put pennies in the meter? It's dimes, nickels, and quarters. And what did the nickels buy for in terms of time? A nickel would be six And you said that the car had a Texas plate registered to the defendant? It had a Texas plate. Okay, but you wrote down that the defendant's address is an Arizona address. Do you recall that? At least on the complaint I have. No, I don't. I didn't know that it, it was there. Based on what I just asked, did you have any questions? Based on what I asked, did you have any additional questions? No. Can you be excused then? Yes. Okay, have a seat then. And the state has one additional witness, but before that, the state would ask the court to judicial notice of the particular parking um, city ordinance in question, specifically section 94-152. I can provide the court with a copy. Okay. I'm being asked to take notice. The court can take judicial notice of the, the existence of certain statutes, ordinances, and laws, and I'm going to take notice of the fact and I'll put this into the record. Thank you. The state called Ginger Hill.
Um, and when you're, um, so, you, so you're saying that Ms. DeRusso, the parking enforcement officer who issued, issued a ticket to Mr. Perry, actually brought in the parking meter to you to calibrate it and make sure it was functioning properly, is that right? Correct. And how do you know that it was that particular meter that was brought to you was associated with a particular ticket? Um, the number was on the meter. Okay. And, and how did you calibrate that machine or, or check it for proper calibration? Well, not knowing what coins someone could send the meters. Um, we take a nickel, a dime, a quarter, and we put them in the meter, and we check that they give the correct time, and then we actually time it to make sure that it expires when it's supposed to. And what did you, so you specifically put in a nickel, a dime, and a quarter on the meter that was associated with Mr. Perry's ticket? Correct. That was issued on July 12th of 2013? Correct. And was that particular meter functioning properly based on the points that you put in the machine? It was. Okay. And, and, um, and you documented that as well as and made, and kept a log of that particular calibration? And maintenance check, correct. Okay, so based on your training and experience as a parking enforcement manager, is it your belief and understanding that that particular year associated with Mr. Perry's ticket on that date um, was functioning properly? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Before you start, do you have any video on this? Uh, there's, there's one, but we can. Okay, they can bring us down there. Do you have any evidence that the calibration actually took place? <laughs> Other than my word, no. And it is standard procedure in trials that someone is to be found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, correct? I'm not sure I understand the question. It's a very simple question. So I'm just trying to rephrase that. Are you asking if she knows well, would a reasonable person believe uh, an allegation without any physical proof? Objection, Your Honor, argumentative. It is not argumentative. The judge is to decide beyond a reasonable doubt whether I'm guilty or not guilty. You can make, you can make that argument to the court when the case is in. Otherwise, as far as, as, as cross-examination, it is argumentative and I'm sustaining the objection. Okay. Are parking meters regularly calibrated? They're calibrated whenever there's a complaint because we have several, as you know, meters on the street. So whenever there's a complaint, we check that complaint. No further questions. Okay. Can you read your right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Case submitted this case. Do you have any, any uh, testimony you want to offer yourself? Uh, negative, just a closing argument. Go ahead. The state has offered some verbal, what they claim to be evidence, but has offered no physical proof to prove beyond a reasonable doubt to the court that the parking meter was functioning properly or that I was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, so I asked the court to find me not guilty on this ground. Well, there isn't any reason to believe that this particular meter was not functioning properly. The court heard from two separate witnesses about why they believe it was. Um, there is, again, no reason to believe it wasn't, and the state has met its burden. I, mean, I agree that the state has sustained its burden in this particular case. Uh, the evidence supports finding that the meter expired and the meter was working properly. Uh, there are some efforts to uh, speculate that it might not have been, but speculation is not evidence so, uh, during the guilty finding. And that's five dollars. Do you plan to pay that today? I would like to make a counter offer of five cents for the alleged time that the meter was expired. Right. Um, I do need to ask to get this, this uh, confusion squared up. The plate was a Texas plate. It had an Arizona address here. What's, what's your address? 
Uh, the residency or the domicile? Which, well, which, you, which your address? I'm, if I have to send this to you, would if, you... If you need to send me mail, I have a domicile in Keene that is 75 Liberty Street. And what would be your residence? The residency is the Arizona address. So you don't consider yourself a New Hampshire resident? Then? I do not. Okay. But I am domiciled in Keene. All right, well... Uh, it's five dollars. You have. I'll give you ten days to pay it. To pay it at the window. I will offer a nickel, and if the court does not accept that, then I will sit the time off in the Keen Spiritual Retreat. <laughs> no, it's, I'm not going to do that. It's, it's five dollars, or uh, we're just going to default. I guess if that's what happened on that. If I don't pay the five dollars, then what happens? I'll give you the ten days. Typically, you go into a default here, and I don't know if they think we we'll send them off. Does DMV get that or something? They will. All right, thank you. <coughs> Didn't accept my nickel.